Hey guys and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program The War! Last time we went around and did a whole tour of all my border countries and launched a missile at almost every base that did not belong to me. A lot of my competitors expressed dissatisfaction at that, so I think it's time for us to go around and have a look at our bases and see what has been hit. By popular vote, our main attack was pointed at Green Coast, and my closest base to that is Green Basin. As you can tell by the way they both share names, they are very closely located within 100 kilometers of each other, and that is why I thought this base would be the one that got completely taken out, but looking around, all looks good. Moving south from Green Basin, we have Handbutt Cape, my only naval capable base it turns out. This is the only one I have that is on the coast. And once again, all my turrets appear to be exactly how I left them, even if that is slightly damaged. Moving even further south, we have the Island of the Shelf. This is such an out-of-the-way base that I don't think anything's actually going to happen here for a while. I, like, Let's not try and put all my eggs in one basket, but I think this place is relatively safe from harassment. Good as well as I'm not really going to pour too many resources into it as my turrets are still standing. Back on the mainland, we have Area 110011, that is Area 51 in binary. A place that we have protected by a small plane. I think that plane's pretty effective. And two turrets. Everything actually seems to be nice and quiet. And I'm starting to wonder, where's the attack coming from? And now moving on to the KSC-2, that lovely little easter egg available in... Hang about, this guy's got a broken leg. Why, why is his leg broken? What's happened here? Well, that's obviously a weakness in design. Oh, look, yeah, it's happened to both of these. Where, Where's the plane? There's, there should be a plane here somewhere. Uh, let's go have a look at the run. No, I don't, I don't see anything here. I don't see anything at all. Looks like we have a debris field out here, Captain. Which, I've got to say, looking at it, doing a little bit of forensics work, I would say it was consistent with a dogfight with the KSSR. Um, I just, I have this insight, this feeling, also my intelligence network may have got back to me and told me that was a thing. Convenient, really, because the results of the poll are in. For those of you that don't know, in the description of this and every video of the war, there will be a link to a straw poll asking what I should do next, because we are, of course, a democratic country. Last week I posed the question to you, which of our neighbouring cities, countries, bases, however you wish to refer to these targets, which one of them we were going to go and attack today? And almost overwhelmingly, the response was to go for Arequibo. I think it's Arequibo Observatory. The reason I think is because my pronunciations of almost everything is absolutely terrible. And so here we are performing weapons tests on a brand new vehicle at Hanbert Cape. This is kind of a short range air to ground attack unit. You can see slung underneath the wings there we've got four Maverick missiles. We have some 30mm chain guns on the side to protect myself and what's that? Yes! That is a cargo bay in the middle there carrying two GPS guided bombs and a cluster bomb. My flight path towards the target it was relatively predictable. We started off with a 45 degree climb, burning with all the thrust these engines could muster. My aim here was to try and get myself in a ballistic arc going through the upper atmosphere because there's less drag there. Trying to hit somewhere about a kilometre and a half per second by the time we got up there. Unfortunately, fell a little bit short and generally had a carry speed of about 800 meters per second which was still pretty nice and you can see down below there we have green basin in the mountains and just over by the water there green coast so you can see they are indeed very close to each other so i'm going to begin my bank and turn here so i turn my wings over about 45 degrees pull up get my nose pointed towards the island the island of course being where our kibo observatory is at. I've already got my targeting and I'm already sorting out my guard menu and now it's just about waiting for the enemy vehicle to actually get loaded. My main concern here was trying not to approach too fast. Uh, the faster I approached the less time I had 
for sorting out all the targeting and stuff. And when you've got two turbo jets on the back there, it becomes very difficult to get an exact fix on stuff. But flying over about eight kilometers uh, above the sea level, six or seven kilometers above the target, I managed to get a good GPS launch. And I have an interceptor following me at the moment. Unfortunately, I do a very bad job of making the camera follow it. But as you can tell by the chain gun fire, it passes, I'm not going to say harmlessly overhead, but passes a little bit wide. Okay, so with my GPS set, I am thinking about how to go in and make an attack here. I feel launching some missiles to distract it first was a good plan, and indeed a solid hit home there on that one. So I've got to try and shift my target now. Unfortunately, the GPS I had set up was to bomb the two that were in a line on the platform there. Oh, what, one of them exploded. I forgot to mention, if you go back and have a look, the missile platform managed to launch a missile into itself. Now, I'm not sure if this is an inherent flaw or just the angle I happen to be flying from, but it, it seemed to have a little bit of issue there. You can see there are two piles of debris, and I'm going to class that as a win, as I always will. Now I'm trying to set up an attack on this target that is kind of down in this little hollow there. It is actually protected on almost all sides by the landscape. And if you get really close, you can see that there are two buildings currently on the right-hand side. Oh, it's just gone. But it was on the right-hand side of the targeting, and that also protects that turret remarkably well. So I think I'm going to try a bombing run. I've got a GPS lock, so let's go around and try and make that work. It's a bit hard with all the windows on screen. Uh, also, my plane doesn't fly particularly well when the vast majority of its insides are hanging out. Uh, I didn't think Kerbal actually modelled flight that well, but when I opened that cargo bay, oh man, it it got very difficult, very, very difficult indeed to make this turn. So one of the things that we've been practicing on the Tuesday streams is, of course, the bombing runs, how to attack vessels that are in, in different places. So I was relatively confident that I could make this work. The trick was not to go too high up because then you lose your little reticule, the big circle, if you will, for the aiming. But the moment I got in range, I decided to drop all those bombs and was like, okay, what, what can we do? We're just going to fly up here and watch. Ah, very well defended by the turret there. I, I'm now thinking, oh, okay, what can I do? I've got a cluster bomb, but it's going to shoot that if I try and do anything. I do have a Maverick missile left so let's let's try and get that working if we can get a radar fixed then maybe we can do things properly or i could fly very very close to the turret and give it a perfect opportunity to shoot at all my valuable valuable parts uh, and that was the end of my short range bomber took out two turrets one turret took it down i i think that's a win leaves me with a positive kd ratio anyway and so that leaves us with 20 parts left to spend on defences, and I have deployed the Handbutt Star. Those of you who come along to the Tuesday streams will recognise this design, built solely for manoeuvrability, so when it gets into a dogfight it can turn so much sharper than anybody else, or so is the theory. So I'm going to take a couple of minutes here to play around with these AI menu settings, try and get on the most extreme attack profile I could possibly set up. And that seems like the perfect time to talk about this week's straw poll. Now obviously, as always, down in the doobly-doo, you will find a link leading to the straw poll asking what I should do next turn. So your list of four options today are to continue the attack that we have been doing today on our Kibo and go over and try and take it over, or we could contact the nation in charge of our Kibo, the KSSR, and try and negotiate some sort of mutual agreement to come out of this without continuing on this pointless war over what was essentially his, la his nation's last commander's choices. Or I've picked two other targets. We can either get uh, somewhere on the USK. They are the nations to the north and east of me. The nation to the north and east of me. All the different bases up there. Either Dead Kerbal Pit or Dundard's Edge. I kind of like Dundard's Edge for the view. And then finally we could go and capture Green Coast. That of course is the base that is oh so close to mine. 
And with all that explained, it only really leaves me to say thank you very much for joining me for this adventure, guys. Do not forget, if you enjoy this type of content and want to see more of it and wish to support me and my channel, that I do, of course, do have a Patreon where you can go and show some love. And obviously appreciate every single one of the patrons that make this possible. So yes, I will see you next time when we're going to enact the will of the vote. Of course, thank you all very, very much for watching. Bye!